that we have been assembled here together in the temple to give in his name the glory and to give his name the praise. I hope that while you're here that you have your your communion cup and before we get into the word today, just for a few moments, we would like to go ahead and let's do our communion right now. And God has kept us in his benevolent care all during the week. And none of us deserve it. None of us deserve his mercy his grace. And so I want you to take that cup, if you would, peel back the perforated piece. represents 
the suffering that he experienced. They needed humiliated him. That body was broken for our brokenness. Now take the cup and drink all of it. This represents his blood. Without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sin. Oh! 
him to Jerusalem and set him on a pinnacle, a high piece, a high step of um, the temple and said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down from hence, for it is written, he shall give his angels charge, angels charge over thee to keep thee. And in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou shalt dash thy foot against a stone. Jesus answering said unto him, It is said, Thou shalt not tell the Lord thy God. And when the devil had ended all the temptation, he departed from him for a season. Jesus returned in the power of the Spirit into Galilee. And there went out a fame of him through all the region round about. And he taught in their synagogues, being glorified of all. He came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, and as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for the reading, and there was delivered unto him the book, the prophet Isaiah. When he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the broken heart, to preach deliverance to the captives, and recovering of sight to the blind, to set at liberty them that are bruised. Just for a few moments, um, can you just speak to yourself and say, I was anointed for this. Father, in the name of Jesus, we Lord, we honor you and we thank you for your goodness and your mercy. Um, speak to your people today. Give them some understanding of your word and encouragement in the name of Jesus. There are two words that are almost synonymous and they connect in drawing a, a vivid picture of who God is. Not only who he was, but who God is. These two terms are called, one is called glory, and the other is called anointing. The glory of the Lord is the evanescence, it's the presence of God. You don't see it, you sense it, you feel it, you know it. And the way we know about the glory of God is because when we begin to think about what he has done for us and how he has kept us. I'm telling you, um, I love music, and because it's right, and it's always right to praise him in music, but it doesn't take much for me to become excited when I think about what the Lord has already done for me. Unlike you, um, the Lord has delivered me from much. Hallelujah. Some people come to church and they act like they have been saved all their life. <laughs> oh my. And they become perturbed, disturbed when a crackhead comes into the house, and when a drunkard comes in the house, and hallelujah, the lady of the night comes into the house, a liar and cheater, and 
oftentimes if you've been in church too long, you lose the smell of the world. I wish somebody would say amen. And how easy it is to forget that you were in the same place. Matter of fact, some of us are still there. And we just operated by the grace of God. That he doesn't cut us off. But, but what happens oftentimes, we think church is for perfect folk. It's for perfect folk with perfect scenarios and um, everything works great when you come into the church. When in fact, your battle began when you decided that you were going to live for Christ. You become the arch enemy uh, of the enemy, the devil. And sometimes when the Lord speaks to us through what is called the Shekinah, Shekinah is the essence of God. I can't, as much education I have received, um, four degrees and terminal degrees, doctorate degree, I can't teach anybody how to believe. Hallelujah. Um, I, I can't teach you how to believe. I, I, I can teach you how to live right. But I can't teach you how to believe. Because belief comes by faith. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing what? The word of the Lord. And that hearing is not even really literal hearing. The scripture talks about the discernment that it's God that's speaking to us. And we know according to the scripture through the orals and the passages of the word of the Lord that he has shown himself to be a great deliverer. He has shown himself through the storm, the wind. Um, he uses people and he uses um, category issues to bring us to the place that we need to be. The Shekinah glory, the Bible tells us that God is a spirit which means literally um, th there is no man that has actually seen God face to face, actually. And the Bible says, live. So the only way that we can really see God is in a faith sensory issue. Hallelujah. So that's why oftentimes it's difficult for people to come to church and not get anything out of it. Cause we have been so, uh, we are a repository of emotions and feelings and many of us are accustomed to living off of our feelings, off of our emotions. If it feels right, if it tastes right, if it sounds right, then we're able to do it. How many of you know that your emotions can get you in a lot of trouble. Oh my God, if there were any witnesses in the house. Amen. Five minutes of your emotions can give you a lifetime of headache. What took you five minutes to get in takes you a lifetime to get out of it. Because it felt right at that time. Puff, puff, pass, pass. And it felt good at the time. Or a gin, a tonic, oh my, or a heroin, or crack. It felt right at the time. She felt right. Oh my God. Anybody you remember the, the, the commercial? Um, it, it's a, uh, it smokes like a cigarette should. I don't know if it was candles or if it was Marlboro's. But I was a Marlboro man, you know, like, because it, 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 I saw that picture of that statement of a man and I wanted to smoke, hallelujah, 
because uh, it, it, it made me feel more manly. And uh, not only did I smoke cigarettes, but there were other cigarettes that I smoked. Mary Jane. Come on, somebody. I'm not talking about a woman, and I'm not talking about a person. I'm talking about stuff that will make you feel good and make you feel high and make you feel like you can go ask her for a day. Oh my God, she's so beautiful. He's so statement of a man. I mean, it makes you do things that you would not necessarily do. And we find out there are emotions and, and we are bound by the emotions of life because we are sensory. That means uh, we can't help what we see. We can't help what we smell. We can't help what we hear. We can't help what we taste. Oh my God, amen. And you can be exposed to something and have a taste for something. You can smell something and have a taste. Oh, come on, somebody. I can smell the poison of my wife right now. I remember when I first met her 42 years ago, and, and, and they had some new poison, but she had some old poison. Come on, somebody. And even before I could see her, I smelled her perfume. Hallelujah. And I said, yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, yes, oh, yes. And, and so I wasn't really uh, attracted to her inner beauty, even though I said, I love you with your inner beauty. But really, it was being moved by the century. But how many of you know that your emotions can fool you? Right? You can see, smell, taste somebody that's six foot four. Come on, somebody. But they won't work. Oh, yeah. oh she's got long hair. Only to find out that she takes it off at night. Come on, somebody. Oh, oh she got something. Uh, Pickety black and all of that. Hallelujah, and only to find out she's got tight stuff and stuff that don't even belong to her. Only to find out I've been duped, I've been fooled, and now I'm in a relationship, a soul tie with somebody that's messing up my life. Amen. When you were dating them, you could go to church, but now you put a ring around it, and they won't even let you out of your sight, out of their sight. Oh, come on, somebody. And if you go to church, then you must be going with the bishop. You must be going with the pianist. You must be going with the drummer. You must be going with somebody. But you just want your soul to be free. I wish somebody know what I'm talking about. Amen. You can have a sensory, and this glory of God is very deceptive to most folk because they really want to see the glory of God. They want to see miracles. They want to see signs and wonders that happen. And so the Shekinah of glory of God, that's one thing. The Shekinah glory means the heaviness of God. It's the duh. Everybody say duh. Amen. That's Hebrew. That means the heaviness of God rests upon us. I don't know about you, but there was a time in my life over 40 years ago, I was tired of going to the club. I was tired of smoking the MJs and going there. I was tired of drinking the Coke 45. Oh, yes, I did. There was something more than just clubbing and macking. There was more than just an earring or an afro. Come on, somebody. Head full of hair, fist in the air. Ain't getting nowhere. But that's the game that you play. But there comes a time in your life that just drinking won't do. Sexing won't do. Come on, somebody. Shooting something in your head won't do. Cigarettes, mob pearls, and candles won't do. Panacras, it won't do. A gin and tonic won't do. Because all of those things touch your flesh, but it doesn't touch your soul. Because I'm going to let you feel my glory. How do you feel God's glory? 
you come to a place in your life and the time in your life that says life gotta be better than this. It's gotta be better than that. It's gotta be better than having a nice car and listening to the taboo, to the boo boo, to boo boo. Come on, somebody, it's better. Oh, come on, somebody. They just sitting there drinking with your boys and sipping on some gin and tonic. It's gotta be more than just clubbing and fighting and cussing and fussing. I need something that will give me the opportunity to go to sleep at night. Oh, go to sleep at night in the right day. It's somebody. I'm over here to preach. Oh, uh, yes. Tell somebody I was anointed for this. I was anointed. So the glory of God is His shine. It's His heaviness. We can't really explain it because man is a tripod body, soul, and spirit. Man is filled with emotions. I told you that. But man also has a spirit. What is a spirit? That's a personality. Uh, you say potato, and I say potato. And then it's the way we look at life. Part of that is our socialization of life. It's how we grew up. It's the experiences, the sum of experiences that we've had all our life. Now, uh, you didn't ask to be born in the family that you're in. Mm. Oh my God, some of you, I'm preaching hard right now. If you were to tell the truth and you were to testify, some of us were born on the wrong side of the trap. Some of us were abused. Some of us were molested. Some of us were neglected. I'm a counselor, so I understand this, that one out of four women are sexually assaulted in America. By the time most women become 12 years old, they've already been assaulted. And now those numbers are creeping up for men. One out of seven men have been assaulted, sexually abused, Come on, somebody. And so one out of four of you have been touched by a family member, or you've been touched by a dirty old man, or by a dirty old woman. And now you can't even love the way you're supposed to love because somebody took advantage. Oh, come on, somebody. But God said, I'm going to give you some glory. I can't give you chronic. Oh, come on, somebody, because you might get addicted to chronic. And I can't give you crack, because you might get addicted to crack. But I can give you joy unspeakable. Oh, yes. I want to tell somebody right now, I've got something greater than chronic. And I've got something better than Deborah. And I've got something better than my 760 L.I. going 110 miles in 30 seconds. I've got something that's got joy on the inside. That's why I can come to church and my wife is in the hospital. Because my joy is not centered around the double It's not centered around my PMW. It's not centered around my bank account. It's not centered around my fuel and food. But when I think of the goodness of Jesus and all that he's done for me. Is there anybody out there? You tried him and you tried her. You tried Shem and you tried them. But can't nobody do you like Jesus. Oh, come on, somebody in here. You tried the glory of God. And when you wanted to cry, you praised to him with greatness. When you wanted to give up, any witnesses in the house, and I'm the only one. And I'm the only one that wanted to give up. Many times I wanted to give up. Matter of fact, I gave up on God. But thank God he did not give up on me. I turned away from him. And I released my hands from him. But oh, thank God he would not let me go. When I let him go, he would not let me go. Oh, what a friend we have in Jesus. 
somebody put your hands together. I mean, somebody say, I mean, what a man, what a man. I mean, what a man did. I mean, oh, come on, praise him in the house. The glory. I mean, the glory of God. I mean, and what the glory of God does, I mean, it sits upon us. I mean, can I, can I use this for an example? God says, I mean, I'm going to give you glory. Something that's invisible. Oh, thank you. We have lost our mind. I mean, sitting up in a 65,000 square foot building. I mean, ain't got no air conditioning yet. I mean, but we sit up in here in the hearts. I mean, and giving God the glory. God says, I mean, the glory, can I use you, Scott? Can I use you for a moment real quickly? God said, my glory is going to come upon you. I want you to get a chair right there. I mean, now what God says, what my glory, yeah, it's mystical. It's called the Shekinah. It's the presence of God. He's everywhere and nowhere at the same time. Oh, come on, somebody. And so what he says is, I mean, I'm going to give you glory. And my glory is going to sit upon you. I mean, oh, come on, somebody. Does anybody know when you are going through life and trouble comes? And can I say it? It feels like hell. It feels like a tornado has hit you. And you don't know where to go or you don't know what to do. Uh, yes, and there are times God says, I'm going to sit on you. Sometimes we want to get up and we want to walk away and say no more. But God says when you are ready to give up, go on, try to give up. I'm going to sit on you. Look at somebody and say don't move. Don't move. Look at somebody and say don't move. You're in the right place. At the right time. And so just so that you don't mess up. And you go chasing after her. And you go chasing after him. My sound don't sit on you. So you don't move. The word of God said, we will be like a tree.
a woman. But there were some things that were out of my head. Stuff I do. And I messed up. And I thought I was going to be in this stuff for the rest of my life. But the Lord clobbered me. Come on, somebody. I wish somebody would get this. They think you're a Casper, the friendly ghost. But I've been covered. What have I been covered with? There's a fountain filled with blood drawn from a man who's name. Not 
the real power. Pulled out a gun. True story. He loaded the chain on his revolver. The chain that was loaded, you all. Put the gun to my head. It is a true story. Somebody say he pistol with me. Yeah. Look at somebody say he pistol with me. But I'm still alive. Still, I'm still alive. I'm still alive. And don't you think that anything that you have gone through is so bad that God can't work it out? I'm the last one. To look down on anybody, the chief of sinners. And if God could take the taste from my mouth, what will He do for you? If God can break addictions for me, what can He do for you? Come on, somebody. God can give you joy like no one can give you joy. What will he do for you? God is speaking to you right now. Even those of you that are saved, you've sort of lost your joy. You've lost your way. You've lost your focus. And God says, I want to sit on you. I want to give you some more joy. Because it's the joy of the Lord that's your strength. Reason why I stay in the house of God. Not because everything is perfect. But the joy of the Lord is my strength. Hallelujah. If you're here right now, don't look at anyone else. Look at anybody you came with. I'm not asking you for membership. I'm not asking you to join this ministry. I'm not even worried about that. What I am worried or concerned about is your soul. And God is talking to you right now and saying, I got to make a change. He's been too good to me. When you begin to think how close you came to death, how close you came to death, even if you were in jail, God kept you. And you owe him your life. You owe him your praise.
I know you've been in my house. I know. I 